Hello, hello, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another how to video on the Tinker's Construct mod for Minecraft 1.12.2 with yours truly, Alpha Pickle. Today, we're gonna have two parts of this episode. One's gonna be like the very basics if you've never used this mod and want to know how to get started with it. Then the second part's gonna be some of the cool items that I found in this mod that I didn't know about for the longest time, and some of them are super cool, such as this one I'm using the mine right now, which works very well and is surprisingly very cheap to make, so let's get to it. So here we are. This is everything you should need to get started in this mod. You'll need 54 sand altogether, 52 gravel, 52 clay, and you'll have to craft this stuff called grout, and you should get a stack and 40 of it out of it, and that's the crafting recipe. Then you take your grout, throw it in any regular furnace will work, smelt it up to make these seared bricks, and then you'll have two leftover sand, make sure you make glass out of those, and then you'll just need some wood, some cobble, and a bucket of lava to power the smeltery. So what you'll need to craft is going to be the seared glass, just one of those, one seared tank, 17 seared bricks, one smeltery controller, one smeltery drain, one casting table and one faucet and then you also want to get yourself a stencil table a tool station and a part builder and if you don't already have one it's nice to have one of these materials in you book from the tinkers construct mod super handy if you haven't looked at it already it'll basically tell you everything in the mod you need to know so if you have the time just just look at it and there you go so you want to set up your smell tree exactly like i do here it's a three by three area you can make it bigger than this if you would like, but this is the smallest possible one. So this is the minimum amount of material you will need for this. And we're gonna put the smeltery drain right there. Put the faucet on that. And uh, as long as you built it right, you'll see that this lights up, the smeltery controller. If it lights up like that, that means you completed the structure complete. So you can technically make this as tall as you want, it says. I don't know if you can go to build height. It says in the book you can make it as tall as you want. So you can always try and you can make it up to 11 by 11. So this one I think would be considered a five by, well, I think it'd actually be considered a three by three. You can technically make it 11 by 11 if you want a really giant one. And I already have some ingots in here as you notice, but all you do to smelt up your ingots or anything else you want to throw in here is you just throw them in the inventory right here and it'll cook it up as long as you got lava in the tank right here. Honestly guys, that's pretty much the basics of this mod. So. There's a lot to fumble around with. Like I said, this book has a ton in it, so go ahead and flip through it if you have time. Tell you how to craft everything, what pieces you need, and everything like that. And I believe I have all the materials right here you can craft the tools out of. So, there's quite a few, as you might have noticed. There's quite a few. And here's four more in the mod pack I'm using, Feed the Beast Revelations. Uh, you can make tool parts in weapon parts out of these pieces as well so they're pretty cool items you can make better tools that way some some mods will add support to tinkers construct so you can make uh like pickaxe heads out of cool mod ingots instead of just the original ones which is pretty cool another thing to note is the tool forge so as you might have noticed there's only a handful of tools right here and you don't unlock any more or anything like that but if you upgrade your tool station to a tool forge, which is pretty easy to do, and I'll show you that real quick. That's the crafting recipe. Just some more seared bricks, the original tool station, and some metal blocks. So you can use iron, gold, emeralds, I believe diamonds, and several other ones if you wanted to. Iron's generally going to be the easiest one. So if you make the tool forge, it works exactly the same as this one. So you can honestly just boop, get rid of that one and plop this one down instead. And you'll see it has a lot more options. You can make the later game weapons and tools. So like the hammer, you got the excavator, the lumber axe, the cleaver. So the more advanced tools you can make with this. But you can also still make your basic ones. So you don't even need your tool station anymore. Because we could have made our pickaxe right here if we wanted to. And just a couple last things I'm going to note before we uh, go ahead and get on to the next part is these are pretty much all the modifiers and again they're going to be listed in your book if you want to see what all you can do with them and some of them are pretty cool pretty unique to the mod but a lot of them are just your standard vanilla enchantments too so like lapis on your pickaxe is going to give you fortune is what it's called luck so you see that luck one fortune one so 60 lapis would give us level one fortune we can go ahead and put that right back in there 
and 180 lapis will give us fortune two and then last but not least 360 will give us fortune three and you might have noticed that did take away one modifier so now we have one modifier left because that's what these are called that you can add to your tools and weapons they are called modifiers and most of them are just like a single item so you technically don't need block and dust you can just do it by dust one at a time if you want but it's just easier if you little trick is throw a block and the dust in there and you're basically adding 10 at a time that way see so you can add 10 which is handy but also a couple of them you do add two pieces too so i think this one is the beheading trait and i'm surprised it let us put it on our pickaxe i actually did not think it would but as you might notice it does take uh ender pearl and an obsidian to give that trait so i guess we'll put beheading on our pickaxe I don't know why you'd want to do that, but there we go. We got beheading on it. Other thing to note is the smeltery works just like a pulverizer pretty much and any other thing that will double your ores. So if you throw one iron ore in here, it's going to give you two iron ingots. And if you throw four iron ore in here, it's going to give you eight iron ingots. So it's nice for doubling ores too. Probably by this late in the game though, you're going to have something else. But it's still good to note. You also might have noticed this material right here, blood. How you get blood is taking damage in the smeltery. So if we go right here in survival mode, you'll notice we start taking damage and it'll create blood in our tank. And you can use mobs for that. So you can like throw a cow in there or a creeper if you wanted to. But also an easier way to get it is just to throw rotten flesh in there. That's what I would recommend. If you just throw rotten, rotten flesh right here, it'll make blood. That's a pretty easy way to get blood if you need it. This is all the items you can craft in this mod. So there's four different swords, like four different range weapons, some arrows, a couple other unique items, and then all your tools right here. So that's just a little visual representation of all the things you can craft in this mod. So pretty fun to mess around with for sure. And then also these are all, or at least most of the weird ingots and alloys you might need in this mod pack. So like cobalt. Is pretty popular to use in Tinker's Construct. It just comes from cobalt ore, which is found in the nether. It looks like this. And then Ardite, Ar same thing, uh, comes from the nether. Looks like that ore right there. And you just smelt it up. It, you'll get two of those from one ore if you use the smeltery. Uh, this one, I'm not even going to try to pronounce. But that one is made by combining cobalt and Ardite together. So you can do that in their smeltery. If you throw one of each of those in there, you'll get some of this ingot. Then night slime is kind of the same thing, but it's going to take purple slime ball, some cobble, and some iron. And then you got pig iron, which is going to take clay, your blood, which you can get from rotten flesh, as I mentioned, and an iron ingot in your smeltery, and you'll get pig iron if you want to use that for crafting. And then you got your aluminum brass, which is a, I think we covered it already, but definitely a common alloy you will need in this pack. Just takes three aluminum, one copper in the smeltery. And a couple other weird ones, you got mud brick and dried brick, which are just made by clay for the dried brick and dirt for the mud brick. So just wanted to cover that with you real quick. Here you can see, that's actually the dried brick right there. I think it looks pretty cool. You can use those ores if you want a visual of them. But here you can see a couple unique items to the mod. Let's go ahead and get all this stuff out of here first, though, because I'm excited to show you some of it. I know it looks like a lot, but... First, we got these slime drops, which are kind of cool. So if we go ahead and eat them, yes, we eat them. Yum, yum, yum. I ate two, I know. The red one is going to give us health boost, so that gives us two extra hearts right there, and I believe a little regeneration, I'm not sure, but it gives you two extra hearts. And the purple one gave us luck, which I assume increases our looting and fortune effects, so that might be interesting to try when you're mining like diamonds or something. So if anyone tries that luck effect with fortune three on diamonds, let me know if it changes the outcome of it. I'd be interested to know for sure. And they're both pretty easy to make. You throw purple slime bar, ball or blood, and blood's pretty cheap early on, onto these drying racks right here, and it'll dry out into whichever one you make. So there you go, there's that. These things are really cool too. It's called a clear item frame, which is from this mod as well. And they are pretty pretty interesting because if we throw like an ingot in this, like your normal item frame, completely gets rid of it. So you could uh, 
that could be useful, I'm sure, in a lot of situations. It looks kind of weird with just an ingot on your block, but I'm sure you can get creative and do some cool stuff with it. Then you got these punji sticks, which are easy, cheap game, early game mob farm. That's for sure, because they do quite a bit of damage, as you see, and they actually give you a slowness effect, too. And they're really cheap to make, so you can throw them down, kills mobs for you. Why not? So, I'm going to show you how to make evil infused ingots real quick. A lot of people have asked me about these. They're pretty late game. They do very well for weapons. Like they do a lot more damage than anything else you can make in the Tinker's Construct for your weapons. So if you want to make a sword or something, this is the best thing to use if you can get your hands on it. And how you make it is iron and a nether star, which you're probably like, I'm not wasting a nether star on my tools. But it's really not that expensive, guys. One nether star and eight ingots of iron are going to get you eight evil infused iron, which you should be able to make a tool or two at least out of that to get started, at least to get started. And all you have to do is throw them in this block called the enchanter and throw some power down in it. And it'll take a little bit to craft, but that's how you get them. The demon ingots are a bit more difficult. Well, I don't know if they're difficult. They're just a bit stranger to make you literally throw gold ingots into lava if you didn't notice we got a ton more so watch again look at that but you do have to have the lava surrounded by nether brick just like this and it'll create this demon ingot if you want to make your tools and stuff out of that i believe it's a pretty good late game material and one thing i actually forgot to show you guys earlier so i'll have to edit this in another really nifty thing a lot of people don't know about with the tools and weapons is this feature so if you take green slime crystal blue slime crystal and magma slime crystal which is why later in this video i'm going to show you how to get all those slime balls because the orange ones are kind of hard to get but if you take all those plus and like binding or a new tool rod sorry i lost my train of thought there for a second but say you want a different binding or a different trait on this Let, let's explain it like that so say you want the shocking trait on your tool but you didn't put the electrum tool rod or head or anything on it, and you like the parts you have and you don't want to get rid of one, but you want that trait, this is a really neat feature. And I didn't know about this for the longest time either, so super helpful. If you do all this and put your tool in there, you can put another binding or tool rod, whatever it is, in here, and it'll actually add that trait. And it's called like embossment or something like that. There you go, right there. That's what it's called when you do this. So, as you see, that Ardite thing gives us pe Petramore. Gives us that trait, but we still keep all our other ones. So, it's super useful. Makes some pretty powerful weapons and stuff out of it. Uh, just be aware you can only do it once. So, make sure you choose wisely. Because now it's going to say that forever and we can't do it again. Next, let's check out my personal favorite item. It's called the Slime Sling, and I did not know this item was in the game for the longest time. That is just disappointing to me, because it's so easy to craft, and it's so much fun. We might die here, actually. It, well, we're not going to fully charge it. Sorry, guys. So that's vertically. Hopefully that doesn't kill us. Nope. But you can also go hor like horizontal with it. So... You can get pretty far with this thing. Like, I was very surprised how much range you got. Look at that. You can use that for easy early game travel. That is insane to me how far you can fling yourself. And it doesn't seem to take damage when you, when you do it horizontal. It's based off fall damage. So as long as you don't go too many blocks up like that, you'd probably take a good 15 blocks worth of damage. But if you just go horizontal, I've actually done it several times back and forth from this river when I was messing around with it without taking damage. So you can do some pretty cool entrances to bases and stuff with that. So definitely worth checking out. Uh, I also forgot to mention clear glass. Super awesome if you don't have a texture pack or another mod that adds something like this. Does that. Looks amazing. This is no texture pack or anything. It's called clear glass. Beautiful. All right, now we're going to show you how to get these slime balls because it adds three slime balls, like the bluish one, you got pink or, or purple, and then the orange one, which is probably the hardest one to get, and a lot of people don't know how to get this one. So I'm going to show you real quick. To get the purple one, let's go ahead and teleport to our slime island over here. You got to find one of these. These are called slime islands. They spawn in the overworld, just up in the air. If you have like a mini-map mod on, 
pretty easy to find them on the map like that. So if you don't see them walking by, don't worry. If you look back at your map when you get back to your base or something, you'll probably you'll probably notice them. But this is kind of what they look like. They usually spawn with a tree or two on them. And uh, that's where you get the blue slime. Just mine these blocks and you can turn it into it. You can also get regular slime balls. And it also spawns the blue slime mob so you can kill them for blue slimes. But the purple slimes you have to get from harvesting these trees. So if you break down all the leaves or the tree, it has a pretty rare chance, as you see we didn't get any, has a pretty rare chance to drop purple slime. So you actually get it from the leaves basically. It's a rare drop from, so it's kind of like saplings. So hopefully that's clear enough for you guys since we didn't get it one I didn't get to show you but if you just and you can farm these trees if you just bone mill these trees and cut a couple down you'll get a slime ball or two of the purple ones which you can make these cool luck drops from and a couple other things so let's go get the the fiery one now all right now we're gonna show you how to get these slime balls because it adds three slime balls like the bluish one you got pink or, or purple and then the orange one, which is probably the hardest one to get. And a lot of people don't know how to get this one. So I'm going to show you real quick. To get the purple one, let's go ahead and teleport to our slime island over here. you got to find one of these. These are called slime islands. They spawn in the overworld, just up in the air. If you have like a mini-map mod on, pretty easy to find them on the map like that. So if you don't see them walking by, don't worry. If you look back at your map when you get back to your base or something, you'll probably, you'll probably notice them. But this is kind of what they look like. They usually spawn with a tree or two on them. And uh, that's where you get the blue slime. Just mine these blocks and you can turn it into it. You can also get regular slime balls. And it also spawns the blue slime mob so you can kill them for blue slimes. But the purple slimes you have to get from harvesting these trees. So if you break down all the leaves or the tree, it has a pretty rare chance. As you see, we didn't get any has a pretty rare chance to drop purple slime. So you actually get it from the leaves, basically. It's a rare drop from, so it's kind of like saplings. So hopefully that's clear enough for you guys since we didn't get it one, I didn't get to show you. But if you just, and you can farm these trees, if you just bone mill these trees and cut a couple down, you'll get a slime ball or two of the purple ones, which you can make these cool luck drops from and a couple other things. So let's go get the, the fiery one now. All right, so to get the magma slime, you have to go to the nether. And these things are kind of hard to find, so be careful looking around for one. But they seem to only spawn down at the lava lakes at the bottom of the nether. So like we're at Y level 30-ish right now. We're in a big lava lake, and there's a slime island. They look something like this. Mine's kind of destroyed. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> mine's kind of destroyed but this is what they look like and they have the magma slime trees which you can get saplings out of and just take them back to the overworld and farm your slimes if you want but you can also just take the blocks and uh, craft your slime out of that too so that's how you get the magma slime so I think that's gonna be all sorry for like the jumping all over the place and kind of the crazy episode hopefully somebody found some of this information useful it was a lot to put into one episode and i kind of got carried away with some of it so probably could have did a bit better so i am going to apologize but thank you for watching by the way this thing is amazing i don't think i ever showed how to craft it. it's flint and gunpowder one of each super cheap absolutely amazing seems to drop all the blocks too but anyways i'm gonna call it for today so hope you guys enjoyed please leave some feedback if you would don't forget to subscribe and i will see you all next time bye bye oh my god guys we almost forgot about the best item in the game it's called the piggy backpack and that's how you craft it super awesome item don't know what you'd do without it but if you put it on it counts as your chest piece just like that i think i don't know well i guess you can wear it kind of looks cool anyways that's not what we're gonna do with it we use it to carry around our mobs so that way we have a friend at all time oh oh